Hi there, I'm Guy, you're watching Midwinter Minis, and in today's video we're going to be covering one of the most requested topics in the history of the channel. It's time to finally show you how to paint those vibrant synthwave tyranids. They've been the star of the show in loads of our battle reports, and now it's time to learn the secrets of their super vibrant paint job, and who better to show you but the man himself, Ant. Hi, it's Ant here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint my Tyranid paint scheme in that really bright synthwave style with that pink that really pops. So I'm going to show you how to paint your troops up really quickly because it's a horde army, so there's a good chance you have got loads of troops that you're going to need to burn through really quickly to get them on the tabletop. So first off I've added some structure paste to the base of these hormigans because they tend to fall over very easily. So they need weighing down a little bit, but you could use polyfiller or any kind of putty. First things first, as you'd expect, we start with a primer. Now because I want the scheme to really pop visually, I'm going to be going for a lighter grey that really helps out with that base coat. So the vibrant pink that I use is Vallejo Magenta, which comes in the thicker paint or ready mix specifically for airbrushing. The paint consistency is a little bit weird as it separates quite a bit, making it difficult to achieve a good result quickly with a traditional brush, so I'll be using an airbrush to apply it. But wait there a second, uh, isn't airbrushing really expensive to get into? Well, like anything in this hobby, it can be, but I'm going to tell you that it's worth the investment, especially if you're living in the UK where dry days are harder to find than hen's teeth. Having an airbrush on hand, even if you just use it for priming and base coating, will save you time in the long run. And you know what they say about time? It's money, I guess. It is indeed also one of the resources that you really can't get back once it's spent. Now the airbrush I'm using today is one called KK Moon. So on first impressions you might think this is just a cheap Chinese useless airbrush. And whilst it was cheap, I only paid about £16 for this a few months ago, but prices have gone up a little bit since leaving the EU. But it's definitely not useless. Twin this with a cheap £45 compressor and you've opened up a whole new world of possibilities. So with that being said, on with the spraying. If you're using the magenta fluo paint that isn't pre-mixed, you'll need to mix with some water to thin it out first. It's normally better to do this in a separate pot or a plastic cup, as if you do it in the airbrush cup, it could lead to clogging up the nozzle really, really quickly. Another note on this fluo paint is that it likes to dry very quickly. This is great for airbrushing as it allows to build up a few layers of vibrant colour. Go easy at first, small sprays while constantly moving the airbrush across the model. I'm spraying all the body parts minus the chitin armour. Take your time with this as if you're impatient or hold the model too close, your paint won't go on evenly. You really want to try and build up layers of paint really lightly and gradually until you get a really bright, vibrant finish. If the paint isn't drying and it's beginning to spider, you might have the model too close and the PSI too high, or the paint too thin. If you've got bubbles in the cup, maybe the nozzle's starting to get blocked. Sputtering paint? The paint is too thick or the PSI too low. And it really just comes down to practice. And what better way to practice than on many, many Tyranid troops to make up your horde? After a couple of coats, you should have a really vibrant pink model. The next step is to apply a wash. I'm using Cardboard Crimson here from Citadel. You can apply it quite sloppily, but wick off any of the excess, especially on some of the flatter surfaces of the model. Chances are that you'll be batch painting these by the tens, so by the time you come to the end, the wash should just be near enough dry. If not, make yourself a cuppa and contemplate all the good things that you can see around you. Ah, bliss. Once dry, we'll dry brush it back up to a little bit of vibrancy that it may have lost due to that matte finish of the wash. I'm using the bottled non-mix paint here as it's a little bit thicker and easier to apply with a dry brush. Next, we'll mix a little bit of white into the paint just to give us a lighter shade of pink so we can dry brush some of the highlights onto the model. That's the pink done, now on to the armour. I'm using P3's Meridius Blue here. It's super matte and gives a lovely flat finish. Simply apply to areas of the chitin, not forgetting their little itty bitty knee pads. Aww. Now whilst we're waiting for that blue armour to dry, we can go on to paint the claws and the hooves. 
We'll start by applying Corn Red, which provides a really deep base. We'll then just add a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet, leaving some of the Corn Red showing at the base of the claws and the top of the hooves. This is a dream combo of colours that pair perfectly with each other. To add some orangey highlights, we'll simply add some yellow to the party. I'm using Sun Yellow by Coat Arms. Did you say Sunburst Yellow? No, 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 it definitely says Sun Yellow. But you could use Avalon Sunset by Citadel if that's what you've got around. Just add a little to the Evil Sun Scarlet and apply to parts of the claws and hooves, still leaving some of that vibrant red showing. The last highlight we'll add is just pure yellow to the very edges of the tips and the claws and the hooves. So by now the armour should be fully dry, so we can use Drakenhof Nightshade from Citadel to add some, um, shade. Just be sure to wick off any excess from the flat areas, otherwise it will just look dark and stained. Once that's dry, we can add some highlights by mixing some white into the Meridius Blue, and we can apply this just to the edges of the chitinous armour. Mixing in yet more white will add some final white touches just to the tippy top most areas. And that's pretty much it, now it's only the basing to go. I really like the idea of my Tyranids just devouring biomass which would mix with various enzymes and that will break down all of that organic matter on the surface of any planet into some disgusting goo. To achieve this, we'll be using the PVA and super glue combo. First we'll apply a thickish layer of PVA glue onto the base. You can use an old brush or a glue spreader if you have it handy. Old store cards and debit cards come in really handy for this. I'm using thin super glue, which tends to work best for this rather than the thicker gel type. Just add a few drops of the super glue onto the PVA and leave it for a few seconds. You can then spread into the PVA and begin mixing it into the surface to create some really random patterns. I'd recommend using a straightened paper clip as cocktail stick is more porous and has a tendency to drag the goo off the base. You might need to leave it overnight to properly dry before you start painting it. I'm using Cadia Flesh Tone to paint mine. It might not look like much now, but the next step is where it all comes together. Cracking open our old friend Cobble Crimson again, here we can apply a sloppy wash all over the base and it's here that it begins to look really gross. When the wash is dry, give that base a black rim job and this one's complete. If you want to add a little more realism to your base, you can just add a few drops of gloss varnish to the base where the wash has pulled the most. It's almost as if this is writhing blood and goo that the great devourer is, um, uh, well, devouring. And there you have it, a really quick way of painting up your army of nids. You can adapt the process and spend more time on your champions and monsters than your rank and file troops. I prefer to use some layering or wet blending on the skin and chitin of my bigger models when I have time and when I'm feeling a little bit more fancy. So I hope you found that really, really useful. Now, as ever, if you want to show us some love, feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, and get notified of all of the upcoming videos that we have on Midwinter Minis. Well, I hope you enjoyed that awesome guide, and thank you so much to Ant for making the video. If you enjoyed that, why not check out the speed painting Cadian Shock Troops video that Ant and I made a few years ago now, where Ant shows you how to get a squad of Imperial Guard battle ready in just one painting session. We also had a bit of fun with it too. <laughs> All right, spill the beans. <laughs> now, Ant doesn't have a YouTube channel just yet, but he does use Instagram, where he shows off all of his cool paint jobs. Why don't you go and follow him there, at Ant's Positive Paints. Thank you so much for watching, and a huge thanks to the channel's latest supporters on Patreon. Huckleberry Jude, Alistair Taylor, Victor Doro, Mr. Hoon, Martin Gunnarsson, James Morton, Daniel Otter, Liam, Jacob Plum, Thomas, Sean Schulker Jr., Omar Juarez, Tabletop Ackley, Christopher Gelhausen, Krieg's Hamster, Ivalex2907, Owen Griffiths, Califas, Collective Effort Gaming, Katie Graham, and Sword and Nielsen. If you want to support us in making cool hobby videos, painting tutorials, and battle reports, cool stuff like that, Patreon is simply the best way to do it. For just $2 a month, not only do you get a shout out when you first join, you also get full access to our back catalogue of live streams, access to our Discord server, get entered into occasional giveaways, and other fun stuff like that. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.